Dominus often visited the mortal world, but being six feet tall with light amber eyes and a perfect body, he was kind of hard to miss. Women threw themselves at him all the time, and he took full advantage of it. After Victoria died, he made sure to never fall in love with anyone else, goddess or human. He never wanted to experience the pain of losing another ever again, and if he had to be alone for the rest of his immortal life, then so be it. Although Somnus didn't want to fall in love, that didn't stop him from consorting with every woman he met. He couldn't begin to count how many women and goddesses he'd been with since Victoria's death. He'd only hoped one day he would be able to forget the pain of losing her. Of course, nothing distracted him from her. She had never been far from his mind. That was, until the day Cain was born two years ago. Cupid's son had become such an important part of his life, and he welcomed every minute he got to spend with him. Cupid fell in love with a human named Valentina, and they now live in Chicago. At first, the gods were against Cupid living in the human world, but Val had insisted that Cain have a normal childhood, even though he was far from being like the other children his age. Cain was a special little boy for many reasons. Not only did Somnus name him, but Cain also shared the same powers as well. This was a unique situation, since there have never been two gods on Mount Olympus that possessed the same powers. It was unheard of. Of course it has happened before, but Jupiter was sure to eliminate one. So neither were compelled to start a war when one believed they were the better god. It was because of this rule that Cupid's mother was no longer living. When Cupid was born with the same power, Jupiter gave her the choice to remain on Olympus or die to give her son life. It was clear to everyone that her love for her child was unconditional. When Venus asked Jupiter to take her life so her son could flourish amongst the other gods. Somnus felt the same way when he discovered Cain held the same powers as he had. There was no question in his mind that the boy should live instead of him. But Jupiter decided otherwise, since Cain was such an unusual case. He wanted to observe the child. Cain wasn't only a demigod, but he was also an empath, a person who could physically tune into the emotional experiences of another. Having two gifts was never experienced on Mount Olympus before, which was why Jupiter wanted Somnus to keep an eye on the child. The baby needed to be able to control his powers, and though Cupid was also a god, he and his son couldn't have been more different. Somnus was the god of sleep, and with that came a certain responsibility. Cain would need to learn how to touch someone without putting them to sleep. Being half-human, the boy would certainly be going to school with other children soon, and it would definitely raise some eyebrows if he were to play with the kids and they all started to fall to the floor after Cain touched them. No. That would not be satisfactory at all. Somnus looked up to find Hercules standing over him. Are you going to mope around all day? You're depressing me. Somnus turned back to the reflecting pool. Excuse me for depressing you. You know, the world doesn't revolve around you, Hercules. Sure it does. He stood and rounded Hercules. I'll see you later. I have things to do. Okay, you can be like that if you want. But you do realize we have to be at the party for the little demibrat, or did you forget? Somnus stopped in his tracks and bowed his head. He didn't want to be bothered today of all days, but he would never disappoint Kane.